Paha Mung RPA, Fajauj Mub, PA Circumflex Hao M, known also as NTAWV Paha, NTAWV Keeb, NTAWV Cobb Fab, NTAWV SOOBLWJ is an indigenous semi-syllabic script, invented in 1959 by Shang Lu Yang, to write two Hmong languages, Hmong Da Mub DAWB White Miao and Hmong NJUAAKA Hmong Leng Mub League Green Miao. Form Paha is written left to right. Each syllable is written with two letters, an onset la, an initial consonant or consonant cluster and a rhyme u, a vowel, diphthong, or vowel plus final consonant. However, the order of these elements is rhyme initial, the opposite of their spoken order. That is, each syllable would seem to be written right to left, if it were transcribed literally into the Roman alphabet. This is an indication that Shang conceived of the rhymes as primary. Pahamung might therefore be thought of as a vowel centered abugida. Tones and many onsets are distinguished by diacritics. The onset k is not written, so that a rhyme letter v written by itself is read as kv. Nor is the rhyme o on mid -tone written, so that an onset letter c written by itself is read cow, except following a bare rhyme, as otherwise these could be read as a single syllable. The absence of an onset, however, is indicated with a null onset letter. Again, this is similar to an abugida, but with the roles of consonant and vowel reversed. For an example of the positional variation, consider the phrase in RPA orthography kuv rao che rao koj noj, I serve you breakfast. Since the first word, kuv, starts with a k, it is written as the bare rhyme uv in paha. The word rao, with mid tone o as the rhyme, is normally written as a bare onset r, and indeed this is the case for the second instance in this sentence. However, since the first rao follows a bare rhyme, it cannot be written as a bare onset r, or the combination might be read as ruv rather than kuv rao. Therefore, the combination kuv rao is written uv rao rather than uvr, with the rhyme o made explicit smally et al., 1990-58. Paha has 20 onset letters to transcribe 60 phonemic onsets. This is accomplished with two diacritics, a dot and a tack, written above the onset. However, although there is some scattered similarity between the sounds of the resulting forms, there is no overall pattern to the system. For example, the letter for H with a dot is pronounced th, and with a tack is pronounced place. The null consonant does not take diacritics in Hmong Da, but is in Hmong Njua, for two onsets, NDL and NDLH, which only occur in Hmong Njua. Similarly, Da D and DH, which do not occur in Njua, are used for Njua DL and DLH, which do not occur in Da. The rhymes, in contrast, are over-specified. There are 13 rhyme sounds, but 26 letters to represent them. One of each pair takes four of the eight tones, while the other takes the other four tones. Diacritics nun, dot, macron, and trema distinguish the tones that each rhyme letter may carry. One of the tones, written D in RPA, is not phonemic but is a prosodic unit final allophone of the creaky register M. It may be written in paha by changing the dot diacritic to a short stroke, but it is not used by many people. Shang used the rhymes with the values kiab and kab in Hmong da for kab and kaab, ka, in Hmong njua. However, CWJ mem retains the da values for njua and adds a pipe, to the left of kab etc. to write kaab etc. In addition to phonetic elements, Paha Hmong has a minor logographic component, with characters for the numerals 0 to 10, times 102, hundreds, times 104, myriads, times 106, millions, times 108, times 1010, and times 1012, billions, though the higher numerals have been dropped leaving a positional decimal system. Arithmetical signs. Periods of time, year, season, month, day, date. The most common grammatical classifier, lub, which when written out phonetically consists of two very similar letters, and 18 clan signs. These were never disseminated, but were intended to clarify personal relationships in Hmong refugee camps, where people regularly met strangers of unknown clan. Strict taboos govern the behavior of Hmong men and women from the same clan. Punctuation is derived from the Roman alphabet, presumably through French or Lao, except for a sign introduced by one of Shang's disciples that replaced Shang's, but also includes a native sign for reduplication and a native cantillation mark.
Topic: <laughs> Second and third stage tones. Topic: There are two orthographic systems in use for Paha Mung: the second reduced stage from 1965 and the third reduced stage from 1970. See history below. Some Hmong communities consider second stage to be more authentic, while others prefer third stage as more regular. It would appear that stage two is more widespread. The differences are primarily in tone assignment. Bare rhymes, that is, rhyme letters without a tone diacritic, have various values in stage two, but are regularly high tone B or rising tone v in stage three. Likewise, although the pedagogic charts are organized so that each column corresponds to a single tone, the tonic diacritics are scattered about the columns in stage 2, but correspond to them in stage 3. Stage 4, which today is only used for shorthand, dispenses with the V rhyme letters, replacing them with additional diacritics on the B rhyme letters, so that each rhyme and tone has a single dedicated glyph. Tone transcription is that of the Romanized popular alphabet. History Paha Mung was the product of a native messianic movement, based on the idea that, throughout history, God had given the Hmong power through the gift of writing, and revoked it as divine retribution. In 1959, Shang Lu Yang, a Hmong spiritual leader from Laos, created Paha. Yang was not previously literate in any language. An illiterate peasant, Shang claimed to be the Son of God, Messiah of the Hmong and Khmu people, and that God had revealed Paha to him in 1959, in northern Vietnam near the border with Laos, to restore writing to the Hmong and Khmu people. Over the next twelve years he and his disciples taught it as part of a Hmong cultural revival movement, mostly in Laos after Shang had fled communist Vietnam. The Kamuk version of the script never caught on, and has disappeared. Shang continually modified the Hmong script, producing four increasingly sophisticated versions, until he was assassinated by Laotian soldiers in 1971 to stop his growing influence as part of the opposition resistance. Knowledge of the later stages of Paha come to us through his disciple Chia Kao Avang, who corresponded with Shang in prison. The first stage of Paha, Paha Pa, Paj Haj Paj, common called the source version, had distinct glyphs for all 60 onsets and 91 rhymes of both Mung Da and Mung Njua. Although there were diacritics, there was no relationship between them and the sound values of the letters, and many of the diacritics are unique to a single letter. Among the rhymes, there was a strong tendency for letters which differed only in diacritic to share the same vowel and differ in tone. However, this was not absolute. For example, a letter shaped like U stood for the rhyme IAJ, while U, differing only in its diacritic, stood for the rhyme US. Plain U without a diacritic did not occur. Similarly, the letter that, without a diacritic, represents the rhyme AG, when combined with a diacritic dot represents the onset RH. Thus it can be seen that at this stage the diacritics were integral parts of their letters, with only the beginnings of an independent existence. Stage 1 was abandoned after Shang revealed the second stage, with only the occasional glyph showing up when people who know it write using other versions. However, it is not considered obsolete, as people remember Shang instructions to use this source of all later Paha as a sacred script, the second stage, Paha Njia Dua O, Paj Haj Ntsiab Duas Ob second stage reduced version, was the first practical Hmong script. It was taught by Shang in 1965 and is supported today by the Australian Language Institute and CWJ Mem ever since 1999. The consonants are graphically regular, in that each column in the pedagogic charts contains the same diacritic, but are phonetically irregular, in that the diacritics have no consistent meaning. This situation remained in all later stages. Tone assignment is irregular, in that the diacritics do not represent specific tones with the rhymes any more than they represent specific features with the consonants. For example, the trema sometimes represents the B tone, sometimes J, V, or G, depending on which rhyme it is added to. The one exception is the D tone, which is actually a prosodic inflection of the M tone. Shang added a specific diacritic for this when Chia, who was familiar with RPA, asked him how RPAD should be written, but it was treated as extraneous to the tone system, was not included in the rhyme charts, and was not always taught to Shang's disciples. 
The third stage, Paha Njia Dua Pe, Pajhaj Ntsiab Duas Peb, third stage reduced version. Introduced in 1970, regularized tone assignment, which was irregular in the second stage. It restores the null onset, which with the addition of diacritics covers Hmong Njua consonants not found in Hmong Da, that had been found in stage 1, but does not otherwise change the onsets. Chia believes the lack of this series in stage 2 was merely an oversight on his part in his prison correspondence with Shang Smali et al., 1990-70. It was not distributed as widely in Laos as the second stage, due to fear of admitting knowledge of the script after the communist takeover. Both second and third stage are currently in use in different Hmong communities, however, because the third stage did not appear widely until after Shang's death, there is a suspicion in many communities that it and the fourth stage were invented by Shang's disciples, and therefore are not authentic Paha. In the third stage, there is also presence of different signs for month, tens, and zero. The final version, Paha TSA Pajhaj TXHA, core version, published in 1971 just a month before Shang's death, was a radical simplification with one letter per rhyme and one diacritic per tone. The onsets were not changed. The only graphic addition was that of three new tone marks, for seven total, but half of the rhymes were eliminated. The B, M, D, J tones are written as in stage 3. The V, S, G tones now use the same rhyme letters as the other tones but with different diacritics, circumflex, underlined dot, underlined stroke, and diaresis. The diaresis is retained from stage 3, so only the rhyme letter changes for this tone. Stage 4 is not widely known, but is used as a kind of shorthand by some who do know it, indeed, it may be called. Hmong shorthand in English. Paha is not as widespread as RPA romanization for writing Hmong, partially because of the difficulties in typesetting it, but it is a source of great pride for many Hmong who do not use it, as in Southeast Asia every respectable language has a script of its own, which RPA does not provide. However, for some educated Hmong, Paha is considered an embarrassing remnant of a superstitious past Smali et al., 1990-165. Chao Fa means Lord of the Sky. In Lao, Hmong, Cobb Fab, an anti Laotian government Hmong group, uses this writing system. Origin Because Shang was illiterate, it is sometimes assumed that he invented Paha ex Nilo. However, Shang was acutely aware of writing and of the advantages that it provided, indeed, that was the basis of his messianic movement. It would appear that existing scripts provided his inspiration, even if he did not fully understand them, much as the Roman alphabet inspired the illiterate Sequoia when he invented the Cherokee script, in a process called trans-cultural diffusion. Not only do the forms of the majority of the letters in the oldest stage of Paha closely resemble the letters of the local Lao alphabet and missionary scripts such as Pollard and Fraser, though they are independent in sound value much like the relationship between Roman and Cherokee, but the appearance of vowel and tone diacritics in those scripts, which would appear nearly random to the illiterate, may explain the idiosyncratic use of diacritics in early Paha. Nevertheless, even if the graphic forms of Paha letters derive from other scripts, much of the typology of the script, with its primary rhymes and secondary onsets, would appear to be Shang's invention. The later stages of Paha became typologically more like Lao and the Roman alphabet, suggesting that perhaps they influenced its evolution. However, even from the start, Paha is fascinatingly similar and fascinatingly different. From the Lao alphabet Smali et al., 1990-90. For example, it resembles an abugida such as Lao where the order of writing does not reflect the order of speech, but with the roles of consonant and vowel reversed. There is an inherent vowel, as in Lao, though only on one tone, but also an inherent consonant. In Lao, tone depends on the consonant, it is modified with diacritics, but the patterns of modification are complex. In early Paha, tone depends on the rhyme and is modified with irregular diacritics. Starting with stage 2, there are two tone classes of rhyme, just as in Lao there are two tone classes of consonant. Nearly all other scripts invented by illiterates are syllabaries like Cherokee. However, to represent Hmong as a syllabary, Paha would have needed 60 times 91. Topic. 5460 letters. 
By breaking each syllable in two in the fashion of Chinese phonetics, Shang was able to write Meng, in his original version, with a mere 60 plus 91. 151 letters Unicode the Paha Mung alphabet was added to the Unicode standard in June 2014 with the release of version 7.0. The Unicode block for Paha Mung is U plus 16B00 U plus 16B8F. Notes References Topic. Everson, Michael. The 20th of January 2012. N4175. Final proposal to encode the Pahamung script in the UCS. PDF. Working Group Document. ISO IEC JTC1 SC2 WG2. Ratliff, Martha. 1996. The Pahamung script. In the world's writing systems. Edited by Peter T. Daniels and Bright William. University of Oxford Press, New York, New York, pp. 619-624. Rogers, Henry, 2005. Writing Systems, A Linguistic Approach. Blackwell Publishing. pp. 260-262. Smalley, William Allen, Chia Kao Vang, TXIAJ Kwam VAJ, and GNIA Yi Yang NYIAJ YIG Yaj, 1990. Mother of Writing, The Origin and Development of a Hmong Messianic Script. University of Chicago Press, Chicago. External links Omniglot <inaudible> <inaudible>